Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our Fab Femmes Friday. We're excited to welcome you all today for our Fab Femmes Friday focused on chemical engineering. We have a fabulous group of, of panelists joining us today, and I'm excited to let you hear from them and learn about them and answer, uh, get all your questions answered from them as well. To share with you what we're planning today, we'll have our facilitated panel. I have some pre-selected questions, and then we'll also be taking questions from the audience. And you have the Q&A panel to your left where you can ask questions. You can submit questions there in the box at any time. You just type it up and hit that little talk bubble at the bottom to submit. My name is Trisha Berry. You don't see me. I took myself off the screen because I want you to be paying attention to our panelists. Uh, I am the director of the Women in Engineering program, and it just so happens I also am a chemical engineer, so I'm super excited about today's uh, Fab Thumbs Friday webinar. So with that, we are going to go straight into our panel discussion. And I'm going to flip to the screen so you can see our fabulous panelists, and I'm going to ask each of them to share a little bit about who they are. and tell you a little bit of their background and introduce themselves. And so I'm going to start with Shannon. Okay. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Shannon. I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where I am right now. And um, I'm, I just finished my sophomore year in chemical engineering, but I actually switched from biomedical. So I've only done one semester in chemical. So I've taken the freshman class that you'll take. Um, and then apart from that, I've pretty much gone through all of the like required maths and science classes so I can answer questions on those. Um, and I definitely am very happy to be in chemical engineering. Like I said, I switched to chemi, so it's um, a great place to be. I'm happy to answer questions on why I switched and why I found it really a desirable major. And um, yeah, that's about it. Frozen for a moment. Lauren, are you able to, to go? I don't hear Lauren. Let's come back to Lauren. Brittany, will you introduce yourself, please? Yes, of course. So um, my name is Brittany Johnson. I am from Houston, Texas, currently here now working. Um, I graduated from UT with a chemical engineering degree in 2010. Wow, I can't believe it's been 10 years already. Um, so right now I work for Midstream Oil and Gas Company by the name of Enterprise Products, and I'm a commercial asset manager there for a few of our uh, pipelines that transport oil from Mid-America to the, the Gulf Coast. Um, I believe one of the things that um, I want to share a hobby about myself, which is really hard right now, um, I really, really love to travel. I typically get out of the country one or two times a year, so I'm itching to leave now, but obviously given the current circumstances, I cannot. So I've been spending my time just trying to obviously social distance, but hang out with, you know, family and friends when I can and, um, you know, just play, playing with my, my dog and reading as many books as I can and utilizing the time as best as I can given the um, unique situation we all face. So that's about it for me. Cool. Awesome. Felicia? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump right in next. Um, can you guys hear me? Um, so yeah, my name's Felicia. Um, I currently yeah. live in Philadelphia. Um, I obviously chemical engineering graduated in 
2018. Um, I work for ExxonMobil um, in the midstream organization. Uh, specifically, I'm working in manufacturing. Um, the blend plant that I work at, we blend and bottle Mobile One. So I'm repping, repping the brand here. Um, I guess as far as hobbies go, um, kind of like Brittany, um, I'm a big traveler. I have family in Houston, so it's tough not to be able to you know, travel, hang out with friends and family back in like Austin and Houston. But right now, I would say main hobbies are reading, walking and running around Philadelphia and kind of exploring the city when I can, and uh, reading. That's all for me. Awesome. Thanks, Felicia. Lauren. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, sorry, this is a whole other new new server we're using today than, than I've used for other things, so it's a little bit of a learning curve. Um, but yeah, so my name is Lauren Cordova. I'm actually a fifth-year PhD student in chemical engineering at UT. I will be actually finishing by the end of this month. Um, and then moving actually back to where I'm from in Delaware, so just, just a little bit south um, from Felicia in Philly. Um, and so I'm going to be working there as a postdoc, um, working in the more biopharmaceutical space. Um, and sort of outside of school and my work, uh, one of the things I love to do is volunteer with my dog. Um, she's a, a registered therapy dog, so we used to be able to go visit people in hospitals and nursing homes. Um, and obviously we can't do any of that now. Um, so we've been doing some virtual visits, um, but mostly just walking, running, and chilling around the house. Uh, hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Rosalie. Awesome. Thanks, Lauren. And Rosalie. Sorry. <laughs> Got a little excited. Um, hi, my name is Rosalie. Um, I'm from Houston, <laughs> Texas, and I just graduated from UT Austin in chemical engineering. And um, starting in October, I'll be working for... ExxonMobil in their Global Projects Division, where I'll be doing um, process design for them. Um, I'm actually in Colorado right now. Um, my brother lives here, and so in our free time, we've just been hiking a lot, um, going kayaking, mountain biking, um, and we're also really into fly fishing, so we've been fishing for some trout as well. Awesome. Lots of good outdoor activities. Well, fabulous. So that gives you a little bit of a glimpse into our fabulous panelists. And I see some Q&A uh, is already happening and questions are already be sub being submitted. So fabulous. Keep doing that to all of our um, fabulous guests joining us today. And we'll get those questions answered as we go along. So my first question out to all of our panelists is, can you share a little bit more about why you chose chemical engineering? And then what, do you, what have you done, or maybe give us an example from your work or an internship. What, is, what does that chemical engineering job look like? Maybe we'll go backwards this time. Rosalie, do you want to share? Sure. Um, I initially in high school, I thought I was going to be pre-med. And then I took AP chemistry my junior year. And my teacher was like a retired chemical engineer. And she kind of like exposed me to the field because I didn't really know that much about it beforehand. And um, I chose chemical engineering because she was kind of like my role model and also just because I really liked math and chemistry. So that's why I went into chemical engineering and then I started taking classes at UT and it was just a really good fit for me. It was challenging. Um, I really enjoyed my classes. So that's why I, I kind of stuck with chemical engineering. And um, I've had three internships. My first one with was with BASF in Freeport, where I did um, process safety. And that one I was mainly working um, with classifying hazardous chemicals and um, um, so that we can properly determine process safety incidents. And then my um, other two internships were with ExxonMobil. Both of them were process design. Um, the first one was in Baton Rouge at their chemical plant, and the second one was at their headquarters in Spring, Texas. So it's kind of nice having um, more of like an office internship, and then also having the manufacturing side. Um, if you have more questions about process design, feel free to ask me. Awesome, thank you. 
Yeah, I kind of have a similar. Um, Go for it, Brittany. I kind of have a similar um, story to Rosa no. in terms of why I chose chemical engineering. Um, I think I was a junior in high school and trying to decide, you know, what I wanted to make in college. And just like Rosalie, you know, the things I was really good at and really interested in were math and science. So I hadn't heard of chemical engineering at the time. And my mom's best friend is actually a mechanical engineer. She graduated from, from OU. And she said, you know, I know mechanical probably isn't what you want to do or want to do, but why don't you look at chemical engineering? So I just did some, did some research on it and um, ended up getting an internship my, this summer, a short internship this summer after my senior year in um, high school. It kind of solidified it for me and, you know, told me, hey, this, I really like what I did this summer. This is um, what, I, what I want to continue to pursue as I go into, my, um, go into my freshman year in college. And from there, just got various internships with Chevron, um, and Valero throughout the course of the four and a half years that I was at UT and um, early on af after the first internship at Chevron is when I was really like, you know, I really want to stick with this. It's very interesting and challenging to me. And it's just um, something that I think I'll enjoy a long career. In. Awesome. Felicia, how about you? Yeah, so um, pretty similar, um, I guess, kind of sentiment in high school. I really liked chemistry. I had a really great chemistry teacher in high school. Um, our school was in the IB program, so it's like equivalent to AP. Um, so I remember taking IB chemistry, had a great teacher, but um, I didn't really want to specifically major in chemistry. Um, I don't know, I just, the idea of you know being in a lab for hours on end, like didn't super um, win me over. <laughs> um, but my dad uh, is a, as a mechanical engineer, so um, I think he kind of pushed me in the direction of engineering specifically. So I kind of married the two up and um, chose to pursue um, chemical engineering. Um, my pathway is a little bit different from most uh, ExxonMobil like new hires. Um, they typically hire uh, people who are doing internships, but my the vast majority of my internships that I did um, what during my undergrad were actually environmental engineering. Um, I actually worked for the state of Texas um, for air permitting, um, basically issuing businesses and refineries and kind of permits to make sure that they're you know emitting what they're supposed to emit or not emit. Um, and then I worked for a consulting firm. So that was my pathway, but then um, I remember attending an intro session uh, with uh, ExxonMobil and really had some great conversations with them, how to kind of apply my past ex internship experience with that. So um, long story short, I <laughs> liked chemistry and I liked the idea of engineering and solving problems. Awesome. So, Thank you. Um, Lauren, let's go to you. Yeah, so I actually am going to sort of echo a lot of what everyone else has said, too, that I had a really great chemistry teacher who was also a former chemist or chemical engineer. I can't remember at the time or now. but um, So he was also had been practicing and then came back and was teaching. Um, but then I also had a really great biology teacher. Um, and so I really wanted to sort of marry both of those two together um, in terms of being able to do some lot of biology, um, but also still have that engineering aspect of things. Um, so I definitely toyed with a few different majors and different options, um, but ultimately I picked chemical engineering, um, and I'm so glad I did that it's been a great undergrad and now almost an entire uh, PhD as well, um, and that it's really given me the opportunity to use biological systems from an engineering approach. Um, so instead of using um, bacteria or yeast for making foods um, or like alcoholic products, what can we do with those? How can we harness them for other things? And that's sort of where I'm really excited about and passionate about. And engineering um, enabled me to, to get there and to ask the right questions. Awesome. Thank you. And Shannon? Shannon, are you, you might be muted. Yeah, I was muted. Am I on mute? You're good. Yeah, I was muted. Am I on okay. Mute? Um, so, yeah, I've been asked a little bit on the side about, like, why I switched from biomedical, which I can talk about later. But um, in general, 
uh, to me, I was geared towards engineering because I like to problem solve, basically. Um, and that was something I knew in high school. But when I got into when I got to college and I realized kind of some of the differences between BME and Chemi, I just found chemical engineering was very broad. So if you really like math, you really like science, uh, I would say chemical engineering is a great place to be because like Lauren said, she likes biology too. And that's kind of where how I feel. I like biology almost as much as I like chemistry, maybe more. And so it's a great place to be if you're not quite sure what you want to do um, because it's super broad. There's a lot of really great electives in chemical engineering at UT, which really attracted me. So for example, you can um, take business classes. Like next semester, I'm, I'm registered for marketing. It counts towards my chemical engineering degree, which not every engineering degree has that availability. So back to like my main point is just that you can do so much in chemical engineering. You don't um, necessarily just have to be super gung-ho about chemistry because I'm honestly not. Like I, I want to be working in business probably and I still feel really confident. I mean, yes, you need to like chemistry, but um, I feel really confident that I will be able to find something I like because you learn so much. Awesome. Thanks, Shannon. Well, let's come back to you, Shannon, as well as Rosalie. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about those kinds of classes that you take as a chemical engineering student. Okay. Uh, Rosalie, do you want to go sure, first? Sure, I can. Um, a lot of math and science classes. Um, a lot of, I guess the big ones are like transport phenomena, which is um, heat transfer, mass transfer, fluid dynamics. Um, there's also thermodynamics is a really important one. Um, we have to take both organic chemistry one and organic chemistry two. Um, there's a lot of like core classes at UT that you have to take, like history and stuff like that. Um, and then I just graduated. So my senior year, my classes were kind of taking those core fundamentals of chemical engineering and kind of applying them to, um, um, to like, bigger ideas, I guess you would say. Um, so like my one of my favorite classes from senior year is plant design and you use this software called Aspen and um, you get to design like a chemical plant pretty much. And our project was to um, make biodiesel from algae oil. So that's something that was really cool. Um. Yeah, so I haven't taken like a lot of those classes that she mentioned because I just switched. But I will say um, in chemical engineering, you have a lot of elective options, like so many elective options. It's kind of insane, um, which can be very broad. And you also, I would say more so than some of the other engineering majors, you have to go all the way through like the maths. For example, you go all the way through vector calculus, which is sounds really scary, but it's not. Um, and you have to go through a lot of like OCHEM 1, OCHEM 2, PCHEM. Um, so if you are really confident in math and science, it's really great as opposed to maybe, for example, biomedical engineering, you take a lot more coding classes and less of the core department classes like the math and science. Um, so I can I can jump in there. Oh, uh, chemical really engineering can kind of. That chemical engineering gives. Oh, you go ahead. Go ahead, Lauren. Um, yeah, so I was just going to add that, that chemical engineers can do a lot, and and yeah, so that we can we can do a lot of different things, and that there's a lot of different electives to help you specialize in whatever you might be interested in. Um, so like during my senior year, I was able to take genetics and other biology type courses that I know people who took environmentally focused courses um, or other things like that. And so you can sort of start to tailor your degree um, as you get closer to the end um, to sort of get the experience or move in the direction you sort of want to within your chemistry. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about that crossover into some of these other disciplines. There's a lot of um, ways that chemical engineers get involved in a lot of different kind of work, and y'all have shared that a little bit. 
Do chemical engineers get involved in environmental work? Do any of you have experiences with that, or can, can any of you talk to that? I, most of the internships that I did, um, sorry, I'll, I'll speak really quickly and I'll hand it off to you, Brittany. But um, most of my um, summer internships um, ended up actually being environmental engineering. That's where I thought, where I was, the route I was going to take um, with my degree. Um, so I worked in both the public and private sectors. Um, like I said a little bit earlier, the first, um, the first internship I had was with the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Um, it was literally issuing permits. Um, it was a lot of, um, you had to kind of be really familiar with the um, actual codes and legalese like in Texas legislation. Um, and that was something as an engineer, I didn't really think I was gonna have to deal with, but it ended up being really valuable for me. Um, just being able to carry that experience over into future internships. Um, and then speaking a little bit to, um, I, f I forget who mentioned it, but uh, Kemi at UT offers a lot of really diverse electives. Um, so I took a couple, um, I think the most interesting elective I took as a Kemi, I think it was called Energy and Technology Policy, which was, it took a really like, realistic look at what energy is today kind of in you know in the US in terms of businesses and legislation and where it is going to go in the future so now I'll kind of um speak a little bit about my experience with environmental so I haven't directly had any environmental experience but I do know I guess it just depends on um, the company that you go with, the route you take, like at my company, we have a rotational program for uh, engineers that are coming in out of school, and we take them through three rotational programs um, throughout the first three years of their career at the company. So they do a rotation with operations, they'll do a rotation, they can do a rotation project management, they may do one with mechanical integrity, they may do one with environmental. So if that's something that you want to get into, there are definitely opportunities out there for it. Just because you have a chemical engineering degree doesn't kind of pigeonhole you into doing, you know, what you think is chemical engineering work. There's a, there are opportunities for in, environmental, um, for you to get involved with environmental projects if you if you want to. My personal experience with environmental has just been working with our engineers that you know are working with the. Um, I guess working with the EPA to make sure that we're adhere adhering to all the codes and standards. I moved into project management for quite some time prior to my current role. So working on a lot of big projects where I was doing some design and installation of a lot of equipment out in the field. So I had to engage with the environmental, um, with my environmental team a lot to make sure that, you know, we were accounting for the, proper, the appropriate number of leak points because we could have had some potential leaks if we didn't monitor it regularly um, per, the, per the EPA. And just working with them to make sure we had the proper leak points on the permit to make sure we had the appropriate permits to be able to install the equipment we wanted to install. So there's also opportunity there. If you don't want to do environmental projects, you can be on our environmental team or any environmental team anywhere, kind of doing that sort of work to make sure everyone stays within compliance as, you're, as you know, different engineers are implementing different projects into the, out into the different systems. So. Awesome. Thank you. So we'll do one more question, and then we'll get into all the Q&A um, with all of the questions that have been coming in from our fabulous student guests that are out there. So what do you feel separates chemical engineering or, or chemical engineers from the other engineering majors? They're all thinking. And I'll, while y'all are thinking, I'll give my, um, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to, okay, no, you go first, okay. Uh, I was going to share that one of the things that I really saw in my work as a chemical engineer is that I worked on how to take the chemistry that a, um, the chemistry that, I'll put my, put my screen on so I'm talking to you all, uh, taking the chemistry that the chemist had figured out and the chemical properties for creating some sort of, of chemical product that they had figured out as chemists 
and figuring out how to put that into production, how to make it, and how to make it not just in a, a lab scale, not just in a small scale in a, a beaker, but how to make it in mass quantities that we could then sell into products. Um, and I, in particular, was working on a project that was making biodegradable packaging peanuts. And the chemists had figured out the chemistry part of the chemical that was going to go into these biodegradable packaging peanuts. The mechanical engineers were figuring out how to make the um, pumps and the machinery work the way they needed to to produce the packaging peanuts. Um, and then I, as a chemical engineer, was really working on making sure that we were running that equipment and testing out that equipment at different temperatures and pressures and um, different kind of, um, it was a lot like cooking, a lot of different ingredients to figure out what's the right mix of all of this to get it to work and to make a really good biodegradable packaging peanut that would protect your packages when you ship them. And so each engineering major had their own little different piece to it um, and the chemists had their own little piece to it, and the business people were trying to sell it. But me, as the chemical engineer, I was trying to figure out how do I take that chemistry and actually make the product and get it out there to everybody. So that was what kind of separated it a little bit from the other majors. Lauren. Yeah, so I can handle this one, too, because my fiancé, so my other half, is also a mechanical engineer. Um, so we are a two-engineering head family, which is sometimes great, sometimes not. Um, but the sort of the biggest difference is sort of what Trisha was saying, that, that we think about the processes and the chemical transformations and the different steps, um, whereas they, as mechanical engineers, it's more about designing the equipment, designing the movement, those types of things. There's definitely a lot of places where you work together and on interdisciplinary teams. Um, but that chemist or chemical engineers is more about, yeah, sort of moving that process forward um, with chemical transformations, whether those are, you know, purely chemical or more biological in nature, which is more of what I do. Um, but my fiance works on fabric design for like flood protection. So like there's all sorts of options, no matter what type of engineering you pick, but chemicals awesome. All right. Well, why don't we turn it over to Sammy and Riley for the questions that are coming in from all of our fabulous participants. Okay. The first question I have is for Rosalie, Felicia, and Brittany. Why did you decide to go into the oil and gas industries? And I think if we can go in that order. Uh, so Rosalie first, Felicia, and then Brittany, please. Yeah, sure. So like I said earlier, like all throughout high school, I thought I was going to be pre-med. So when I did start chemical engineering my freshman year, I was still unsure about pre-med. I really liked biology, so I was kind of thinking something in the bioengineering side of chemical engineering. So I spent two years in a research lab um, working under a professor where we synthesized um, nano capsules made from copper sulfide um, so that we could better image um, tumors. And after about two years doing undergraduate research, I just decided, you know, like research wasn't really my thing. And so I, I wanted to explore the oil and gas industry because I didn't have any experience with that. Um, so I, I did my internship, my first internship with ExxonMobil, and I loved it. I loved being at the manufacturing site, and um, I, I, it was just like a really good fit for me. So that's why I personally decided to go into the oil and gas industry. Okay, I can talk about why I picked oil and gas, specifically ExxonMobil. Um, so after doing my two internships um, with consulting and environmental engineering, um, I'm, it's not that I regretted doing those internships, it, but it was rather I did those internships, I took a step back, and I thought, I don't know if I can see myself doing this for, you know, five, ten plus years. So I started kind of, you know, it, it was senior year, it's time to look for jobs. So I really kind of opened up my um, my job search a little bit beyond uh, beyond just, I was still interviewing with consulting firms, but um, wanted to keep my options open. 
Um, and I remember attending an info session with ExxonMobil specifically and how um, most info sessions is just one, maybe two employees, but with ExxonMobil, it was like six to eight different people representing different facets of the company. Um, obviously, they had upstream, they had um, people who were doing, you know, production and exploration, um, things like that, like things that you would typically imagine a chemical engineer would do. But then I specifically talked to people who were doing a little bit more, um, I guess, using their soft skills, is, I, I guess is the best way of putting it, specifically um, negotiating contracts, um, taking um, maybe a certain legislation uh, that's in the Senate and like lobbying it with the Public and Government Affairs Department. And for some reason, those things were really interesting to me. Um, and there wasn't really any one specific thing that I fell in love with. It was just the idea of that there were so many different possibilities within a single company. So I think ultimately that's why I chose oil and gas um, is because I'm a person who, maybe this is the millennial in me speaking, but um, doing the same thing for 10 years does not sound exciting to me, but rather jumping and uh, exploring different roles every, you know, two, three years is, is fun and a challenge for me um, in a good way. So that's why I picked oil and gas and Exxon Mobil specifically. Um, for me, it was, I didn't know, I, I guess I didn't extensively know much about oil and gas but growing up here in Houston. I mean, you drive by the plants and the facilities all the time. So while I didn't have an in-depth knowledge, I was always interested when I would drive by and kind of what those facilities were and what was going on back there. Um, just kind of learning more, more about them. So I got my first internship with Chevron after my freshman year in college. And after that internship, I, I, that's, um, that's when I knew I wanted to be, be in oil and gas. It was always just interesting to me to kind of walk around the processing facilities and kind of learning what a reactor is and what it does, what this distillation column did, um, you know, even just what tank, the different things that happen within, within tanks and pumps. And it was just interesting to me to watch a product go from the entrance of the facility and go through all these changes of different processes within the facility to the, you know, to the, the I guess, downstream of the facility and out to different, whether it's another customer or an end user. So just seeing that process and how it works is um, during my first internship is kind of what made me realize that's the avenue I wanted to go down. And kind of touching on what Felicia said, you know, there's so many different things you can do within the respective organizations that we're in. Like right now, I am, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a commercial manager, so I do asset management um, for a couple of different facilities throughout our company. And it's not directly related to chemical engineering work, but I use my chemical engineering background on a daily basis to help facilitate some of the discussions we have with different, um, with different customers and different teams that we work with. So um, I, I just, I love that more than anything that, again, we have the opportunity there to do a, multi, a few different things. You won't just be pigeonholed into doing one, one thing for the duration of your career. So that's kind of why I got into it. Great. Um, the next question I'm going to ask, I'll combine a few, and then if we could start with Felicia, I know that she answered a little already, but when did you find your inter internship, and around what time can you usually get their internship, and then also, was your internship paid? Yeah, I can talk about that a little bit. Um, so, I have kind of a long story as to why I got that, why I started with environmental engineering um, and consulting specifically. Um, the reason is because um, I already have, I already had a degree prior to pursuing chemical engineering. So really unique, realize that most people are not going to take that route, but I actually um, had a communications degree and I worked in the entertainment industry for a couple years and then went back to school to get uh, my chemical engineering degree. Um, so. I did already have professional experience under my belt, and that was what allowed me right after my freshman year. Um, basically, I, I went to job fairs during my first year as a chemi, and I got an internship in my first year. So 
realize it's not, you know, typical experience for mo for a traditional chemi who um, is right out of high school. But I would say um, if there's, um, you know, even if it's just working a summer job, you know, between your freshman year and sophomore year, that looks great on your resume. That shows, like, you know, I, was, I feel like a lot of people think, oh, well, I was a cashier at Kroger, you know, that's not, you know, they don't really care about that. No, they do. Like, you'd be surprised. You can, if you um, use your resume to your advantage and really use those action words on paper, like um, quantifiable achievements, that um, really pays dividends, I think. Um, so there is no hard and fast rule. Um, I would just say go to dog fairs. Just go. Even if you don't really know what you're doing, if you're really like, oh, I might be interested in this company, but I don't know. I want to learn more about them. Just go and, and ask questions. Um, and then to touch on the uh, question about uh, paid internships, yes, they are paid. That's awesome. <laughs> Compared to my internships when I was in communication school, those are all unpaid. Um, and I will also say, like, for your first internship, um, I can't remember the exact amount I was paid an hour, probably like 15 or something an hour. Like, it was pretty decent. Um, the next internship, though, they offered me the same amount. And I was a little nervous of, to ask, but I basically was like, well, I already got paid this amount last summer, and I already have experience. Can you pay me a little bit more? Like, can you do a little bit better than that? So I would just say, don't be afraid to ask what you think you're worth getting, you know, what you're worth to be paid per hour, uh, especially if you have the experience. Um, feel empowered to do that, for sure. OK, the next question I'll ask is about research opportunities. So uh, for Lauren and anyone else who wants to answer, what kind of research opportunities are available for chemical engineering? And then can you talk about the research opportunities that you have done? Yeah, so um, at an institution, especially like GT, there is a ton of research opportunity. Um, pretty much any corner of the university, there's people doing some sort of research. Um, and so it's just a matter of sort of getting to make some of those connections and, and finding people that you're like, hey, I think this research is interesting. Let me try it out. Um, and so the best thing to do is to sort of connect with your, your um, professors um, or to ask them, be like, hey, I'm interested in this. Do you, do you have someone you know um, that that can really help um, sort of make that transition a little easier? And I know it can be really nerve wracking to email a professor. You know, you think they're these great, big, important people and you're like, oh, I'm too scared. Um, but that's actually how I got my start. I just fired a bunch of blank, e not blank, but emails out to a bunch of faculty. Um, and one of them decided to say, yeah, I'll take you. Um, and then that was sort of how my research journey began. Um, and so just always feel free to ask questions, look at, you know, look into what they're doing. Uh, make sure you do send like a, a well thought out email that you're like, hey, I'm genuinely interested. Here's zero of what I've done. You can bring in classes from high school. Um, but that a lot of research on campus, um, at least in the undergraduate space, is volunteer. Um, there are opportunities to do research for credit. So I know a lot of um, students I've worked with have done it and used it towards their electives. Um, so you can help it sort of meet some of your course requirements. Um, but that also, there are situations where you can get paid. So there's sort of three different ways you can do it um, that I've actually, in my undergrad experience, not at UT, I did all three. Um, so it's just sort of a matter of figuring out what works in that particular research group. Um, but research is just all about asking fine questions. And it's a great opportunity to get to know more people and to get experience. Um, and that I actually did an internship, but I also did research. So I did an internship one summer and research for two. Um, and so sort of having that research experience helped me get the internship. But then I learned in my internship I liked research too much. Um, and so that sort of helped me navigate the space and decide, yes, I want to do a PhD because that's sort of the direction I wanted to go. Okay. 
Okay, another question I have that I think I'll open up to everyone is what does your average day on the job look like or what does your average day to day look like? And then if we could start, uh, Brittany, please. Um, sure. So I'll speak first on the um, a day to day when I was working as a chemical engineering versus chemical engineering project manager versus what I do now. So when I was um, working as a chemical engineer, a lot of the day to day stuff was spent in the field. You know, we do have a lot of meetings that we have to attend, but a lot of the work I was doing was kind of facilitating the projects um, from beginning to end, from design to com completion design to installation to commissioning, startup, and um, then paperwork on the back end. But a lot of my time was spent out in the field um, talking with the operators, the process safety techs, the environmental guys, um, and just making sure things were things were going well. You know, I think we had to have boots on the ground a lot of the time to make sure that the, the systems put in place were going to work properly. Because if not, then it would be a very costly costly issue for us to fix um, later on down the line. So I would say most of the day was just an interfacing with a lot of the guys that are out there 24, 24, 7. And then you go back and then you have some meetings throughout the day because there's always some, I guess, a non-field, non-technical side to doing some of the some of the project management work. So some of the other days were spent in, in meetings with my my boss and other guys on the financial side, making sure the project is on schedule was on budget and trying to kind of get ahead of some of the um, some of the issues that we were going to have or we think we're going to have for the project. Um, in commercial management now, I would say 90% of my day are spent, days are spent in meetings and speaking with customers. Now I do a lot of work with outside customers and negotiating contracts to try to implement new processes and systems throughout the assets that I manage. So a lot of face-to-face -face with customers and um, my upper management talking about some of the deals we're going to negotiate and some of the deals we're going to put in place or potential deals we'd like to put in place. So in my career now, it's way more in the office. But as you start out, I think it'll be, a, if you go into oil and gas, I think it, it'll be a lot of uh, boots on the ground in the field work. And I honestly think that's where you, where you should start, you know. Don't get into the habit of staying behind your computer and staying in the office a lot. A lot of those guys want to see you out in the field, and I think you're more effective in your job if you get out in the field. And there's so much you're going to learn that may not even be in direct relation to your current job, but can help you in the future if you just get out there, get out there and talk to those guys that are that are in the field and you know maintain the equipment that you're designing and putting into place. Um, I guess I can speak to that next um, from my internship experiences. Um, my first internship with ExxonMobil in Baton Rouge, I was on site at the chemical plant. And like Brittany said, it was very boots on the ground. I was interfacing a lot between the technical side. So with other um, engineers, as well as the operators. And I think that was one of my favorite things about um, my my manufacturing site internship was was being able to interface with so many different kinds of people. And also you just learn so much from the operators, like they've been working their units for, for so long, some of them 20 plus years, and they're really knowledgeable about what's going on. And so you really do learn a lot about them. I mean, a lot from them and also about the equipment. Um, so, so that internship, I was um, you know, going into the plant a lot, um, looking at the equipment and then kind of going back into the office and using design software to make changes to the existing equipment um, so that we could improve and, improve and clean it out later um, in a future turnaround. Um, and a turnaround is, is when a unit comes down for a certain time period. Um, so they shut everything down so that they can replete, um, clean equipment, um, make changes like upgrade equipment or change things out. Um, so that's kind of what my first internship was like. And then my second internship was an office setting, um, and I was working on really large global scale projects. Um, one of them was to provide manufacturing support for um, the Singapore site. And that was really cool because um, I interfaced a lot with the, um, the engineers um, over in Singapore and also um, a lot of the environmental engineers at headquarters. And so my day really consisted of um, you know, using chemical engineering software um, to provide support for the Singapore site, while also, um, you know, I had to do a lot of night meetings just because of the time difference with Singapore. 
and um, it was just a lot of meetings and getting information from the reps at the Singapore site, and then also interfacing with a lot of the environmental engineers, like in the office in Houston. Okay, so I think I'll jump in with uh, the sort of the last perspective here of what graduate school is like. Um, and so for me, um, what I do day to day has varied depending on what year I am in school. Um, and so like my first couple years was I was taking more classes. Um, so I was, you know, taking different types of more advanced classes like you would take in your undergraduate curriculum, but then at the graduate level. Um, but then more recently, now that I've fulfilled those requirements, I also um, would assist as a teaching assistant. Uh, and then I also do full-time research. So when I'm on campus, you know, during the day, um, I can have meetings, I can be walking around in the lab doing experiments, sort of our version of boots on the ground, that I'm in the lab doing the experiments, training people, working with people, um, working on teams, um, and that, um, yeah, so there's lots of meetings, but also I, that's one of the things I love about my job is that I get to be in there doing the science um, along with whoever else I'm working with. Um, and that it just varies as you move through the process, um, which is actually something I really enjoyed, having different parts to sort of do different years, um, that it wasn't just like full-time research for five years. It was doing some classes, doing some teaching, so sort of you always got a little bit of um, some uh, mixed diversity. Okay, and then I'll go on for one more submitted question. Uh, I think we got a couple about this, but I'll give it to Shannon for if you could talk more about why you switched from BME to chemical engineering, and then can you just talk about the differences a little or what you found more of a pro and con for each major? Sure. Um, I found that, and this is just like the conclusion that I drew from I talked to a lot of older biomedical engineers, students, I talked to some professors and like read about it online a ton. So this is just what I found um, and what I was seeing in my classes. In biomedical engineering, you learn um, some of the electrical engineering stuff, like you have to take circuits classes, um, you do co a lot of coding that's required, you learn some chemical engineering stuff. Um, you learn mechanical engineering stuff, like you have to take a mechanics class. And so when you go to find a job, if you're looking in the industry, um, it's very specific companies that look for biomedical engineers. Um, so like at career fairs, if there's a biotech company, like the whole line is biomedical engineers because they like flock to that table. Um, and while that might seem like you know a lot about all these different types of engineering, it actually makes you really specified because you just know a, a little bit about each one. Whereas um, a chemical engineer is more specified in like, and more expert on chemical engineering. So like a lot of companies, this is how it was explained to me again, um, a lot of companies want like a team of chemical engineers and a team of electrical engineers and a team of mechanical engineers, for example instead of kind of like a biomedical engineer who knows a little bit about everything. Um, and, and I actually did hear from older biomedical engineers that it was difficult to find a job. And like in engineering, it's, they're all super hard. Every engineering is gonna take a lot of your time. And I think that it's important that to me, when I graduated, I would be rewarded with the ability to get a job. You know, that's like why I picked engineering. So. That was definitely a turnoff about biomedical engineering that the job search was difficult because it is like known to be one of the hardest majors at UT. Um, and then personally, just I remember I was in my circuits class. I was really struggling. This is um, this fall semester of my sophomore year and my teacher like held up a circuit board and he was like, you'll be working with these in lab. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do circuit boards. I can't do like electricity. and chemical engineering was more um, stuff that I, material that I was just comfortable with. So like, that might not be the case for everyone. If, if you, you know, you might like the coding and you might like the electricity. And that is a really marketable skill to have, I would say. A lot of biomedical engineers um, 
took the coding classes and then they could market themselves that way as like really have having gone through a lot of coding I just wasn't great at coding and I didn't like it so in chemical engineering you can do the coding or you can kind of avoid it and like I'm avoiding it so uh, I just like that it's more broad like I said earlier there's a biz there's a business track in chemical engineering which biomedical didn't have so um, yeah I think that's those are pretty much the big reasons why I I wanted to do chemical engineering over biomedical question to all of our fabulous panelists and I know we didn't maybe get to all of the questions that you all had submitted and we'll continue to work to get those answered and posted on our YouTube channel and for those of you in our summer camp on our um, Padlet as we move forward. But my last question to all of our panelists is what excites you the most about the future of chemical engineering and the future of your work? And maybe we'll start with Lauren. Um, that's great because I'm so excited right now. I'm just finishing a PhD heading into the world and I'm like, I'm going to solve so many problems. It's going to be great. Um, and that I work in a very different field in terms of more um, in the biology space and, and where I'm going is actually more towards medicine. Um, but I'm really excited how um, all the different things we can use microbial systems and, and cells, whether they're yeast, E. coli, or human cells even, um, that there's lots of different ways that we're just now learning to reprogram cells and getting them to do all sorts of awesome things. Um, and especially now in making medicines and the company or the group I'm going to go be working for um, did receive several COVID-related grants. So they're working on some really cutting-edge things related to virus manufacturing, virus um, vaccine production, those types of things. Um, so it's a very yeah, high that's exciting. going into right now. Rosalie, you're kind of in the same spot. You're just heading off into the full-time world. What are you most excited about? Right. Um, yeah, I'm really excited, um, you know, to start my career um, and go back to ExxonMobil. I've had great experiences with them, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, my career with them in the future. Um, I'll actually be starting off in a four-month rotational program at the, um, the Baytown site. So I'm really excited to get a very traditional chemical engineering, you know, couple months of experience um, and then go back into my my process design role that I that I love so much and then um, like Felicia said there are just so many different options um, so many different paths that you can go down and I know um, that with Exxon Mobil they like to um, switch up your job role every two to four years and so I'm, I'm really excited to kind of diversify my roles and um, just learn as much as I can. Awesome. Thanks. Felicia, let's head over to you then. Um, so the role that I'm in right now within the manufacturing plant, I am in supply chain. So I am mostly using, um, you know, planning strategies to make sure we have the ingredients that we, you know, we have what we need to blend, um, you know, lubricants, mobile one products for automotive passenger vehicles, for, uh, for rail, for marine um, industrial applications to make sure everyone's engines are running smoothly. Um, and it really put it into perspective for me after a kind of COVID hit. Um, you know, you get really in the weeds with the details of planning and making sure you meet customer orders, but um, you also, um, it really kind of gave me a perspective of the work that we're doing, even though, yes, COVID did have our, you know, our blenders were not as busy. Um, we were still, you know, meeting essential orders, and there were there was a majority of our business that was not affected because, um, especially for those industrial and marine applications, you know, uh, that's essential. It, our business was considered essential. We did not shut down at any point during COVID. Um, and that kind of gave me a sense of pride with the work I was doing, you know, whether it be emergency vehicles or trucks transporting, you know, hand sanitizer or toilet paper to um, distribution centers. Like, it really made me proud to be doing my work, whether, you know, we may not be on the front lines, but we're making 
uh, making stuff happen. And even before COVID, it was really cool to see um, if I were to walk into a Walmart or um, an AutoZone and take off a bottle of Mobile One on the shelf, I could look at the code on the bottom, the yard mark, and say, yeah, that was bottled at our New Jersey plant. So um, definitely proud of the work I'm doing and um, hope to continue satisfying customers and making sure that the world goes round. That's awesome. Thanks, Felicia. Brittany. Yeah, for me, I'm just excited to continue to um, learn and grow within the industry. You know, I've been in the industry about 10 years, and um, there's still so much that I, that I don't know. And given that I just switched roles recently to um, the commercial role that I'm in, um, and kind of given the things that we've been seeing throughout the organization with COVID and the impact it's had on our business, it's forced us to be a little more strategic in the way in which we think and be a little more innovative and come up with new ways to utilize our assets such that should something like this happen again, we can continue to move forward as if nothing happened and we can kind of kind of switch how we're operating and switch kind of some of the things that we're doing to continue to make us profitable. Um, so I'm just interested to, to learn more about that and learn more about how I continue to push project forward, projects forward on my end utilizing my chemical engineering degree because in the role that I'm in now, we don't have a lot of engineers in that role. And I think that's one of the unique things I bring to our group is that I have that background and I can be able to be the facilitator between our ops team and our upper management team. So really excited about what I'll, what I'll be able to learn there to continue to push the push the Awesome. Project. Thanks, Brittany. And Shannon, let's hear from you. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, uh, I just think it's really exciting how chemical engineering touches on so many industries just because, like, at the end of the day, everything is chemicals, you know, like the food industry, like healthcare, pharmaceuticals, oil and gas. There's so many things that you can go for. Um, and so I'm just excited to um, find out what it is that I'm really passionate about and know that my technical background will help me wherever I end up. Awesome. Well, that is fabulous. I hope that all of you have learned a little bit more about chemical engineering. I thank our fantastic panelists for sharing all of their insights and answering so many questions. Uh, and again, we know we didn't get to all of the questions, and so we'll make sure that we continue to answer those for all of you and push that out on our various channels as we move forward. I wanted to fit, wrap up with just a, a few reminders for everybody. So first up, our Fab Femmes Fridays are, are named based on this fantastic role model database that you all can access, the National Database of Women in STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And you can search through this. It's managed by the National Girls Collaborative Project. You can search on all kinds of different factors, zip code, field of work, ethnicity, interest of engineering. You can contact role models that are in there, read about them, and learn more. So I encourage you to check that out as you continue to explore engineering and engineering career pathways. Uh, again, we're putting all of this on YouTube. We have a lot of resources on our UT Women in Engineering Program YouTube channel. And we'll be posting this recording, and you can find all of our Fab Thems webinars on here as well. And this will be one of the places that we continue to answer your questions as we pose um, them to our students and alums and get those answers for you. And then last but not least, we are up again next week with electrical and computer engineering. So join us in the, at the same time and same place, and we'll have some fabulous faculty and students and alumni joining us for that Fab Femmes Friday webinar again. So with that, thank you again to all of our fantastic panelists. Everyone have a super safe and healthy 4th of July weekend. And we'll see you next Friday. Thank you.